Hello everybody, this is Weekend Now and time for getting more analytical away from the din of the markets. In this show, Under the Lens, I go deeper into some important issues that investors face. The idea is for you to get an in-depth macro knowledge of the same headlines and stories which you have been reading right through the week. Today, we are joined by John Elliott, a leading columnist and blog writer and a long time India hand, John, if I can say that, who's made Delhi his second home. John has contributed to Financial Times, Fortune magazine, and his own blog in India called Riding the Elephant. Today, John and I will be discussing two important issues. So sit back, put your feet up, and enjoy the show. Remember that as always, you will have your section where you raise your questions, and we both will deal with that. For that, all you need to do is to email your questions to under the lens at utvmoney.com. I repeat, under the lens at utvmoney.com. The first issue we'll be discussing is why is foreign direct investment in India slowing down? Is it the impact of some of the big ticket news that we have been getting, like POSCO or, or uh, Vodafone tax case? Or is it something much deeper as a, as a malaise? Or on the other hand, don't you, you don't see it as a malaise at all? I don't think it's a malaise. I think it's an international um, flow of funds that the people are looking to invest less. It's certainly not a reaction to the, um, to the current problems of, of, of POSCO and Vedanta um, and, and Vodafone, um, because they are too new. To, accept, to, to, to affect the actual inflow of funds. They might af affect people having a look at the place, but nobody's going to stop actually going ahead with a project which is virtually ready. Yeah, the, the point is, let's say we opened up mining sector, so we expected the BHPs, the POSCOs of the world. It's a very underdeveloped sector in India and was closed. Now, go uh, government gave some approval to POSCO and another arm of the government has held it back. So people are saying, can these, can these guys be taken seriously? You know, we think we have all the approvals, but we actually don't. Yeah, well, POSCO knew what was happening. These companies always know what are happening. What's happening. <laughs> right. And if they, I mean, they may not, they may, may not acknowledge it to, to us, to me as a journalist. They may do to you as a banker. You probably hear much more from them than I do. Yeah. Um, but the, Vedanta and POSCO knew what they were doing with the, with, the, with, the, with the bureaucrats and the ministers they were dealing with. They knew the opposition on the ground. Okay. I think Vedanta could see the problems coming for a long time. Yeah, Vedanta is basically Indian, right? Mr. Agarwal has been around for a long time. Well, yes, but he's a foreign investor from London. For, so yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, 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 he's groupable. I mean, if you're mm. looking at mining, mm. you, the, the investors in London will surely say that Vedanta is a London-quoted company. You yeah, may have Sterlite here. Mm. And therefore, but let's stay with POSCO. Yeah. POSCO had a lot of local opposition, mm. and it was waiting for the government to sort it out. Mm. What we didn't realize at the time, and I've been to the POSCO site, and I've, I've been following that, that right? project, mm -hmm. um, what we didn't realize was that, that, that some of the environmental approvals were suspect. Okay. The problem, of course, is that environmental approvals in this country have been suspect at all levels for mm. 10 years because of a series of ministers until Jairam That's what some others are saying. In. Today, you guys are getting your act together. You didn't have a pre-clearance on environment like many other countries have. And now we are stuck in between sort of thing. You know, they, yeah, but they hadn't got their final approvals. And they hadn't got way. their mining either. They'd okay. only got, so, Costco so. had only got... Yeah. Um, a, a, the, the approvals they got were only for the coast, the coast land okay. site, for the big steelworks, yeah. um, and for a port. They hadn't got any mines, so they got mm. nowhere actually to mine their iron ore. Yeah. They were going to have to do that uh, as and when they could. And it's often when you get to the mining bit that you have then a lot of problems. The tough one, you're, you're really okay. Yeah. The displacement of people, let's try. Right. Exactly. And, and John, this, this recent, you know, last one month, the media is just full of 2G and CWG, you know. Uh, and even Mr. Tata called uh, India, Indian government behaving like a banana republic and so forth and his, you know, privacy, etc. Do you think all this muckraking, which is of course rather Indian, I don't know if it's first of all whether it's only Indian, uh, you are a better judge. Is it in a way affecting that great feel-good factor which people have about Indian foreign investments into India? 
I think it, I think it is because mm. um, I often write about these yes, problems and corruption on my blog. Very readable stuff. And I'm quite and a lot of and I've got a lot of readers abroad, my mm. my friends and my contacts and other people who pick mm. it up. And, and people I know well really are surprised. They mm. know that it happens. They know it happens everywhere. Mm. I mean, America's not clean, London's not, Britain's not clean, despite But the Chinese the somehow see to it that their media doesn't talk too much about uh, ex exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and so you don't get it exposed there. Um, and the French are brilliant at it. I mean, the, the arms deals for years. Uh, but I think people are surprised by the depth of it here. I don't think that mm. people realize mm. how, how in, in, in endemic it is. Um, and to quote Rat and Tata, um, on the way to becoming yes. a banana republic, because it eats into everything. It's very difficult to find a clean bureaucrat or a clean um, a politician who you can say categorically would not take on some deal if they had the chance. Oh, well, well, well. <laughs> I take that. Uh, so, a one liner. With all this happening, you think this FDI, we had about 20% reduction in FDI this financial year. That's a fasting phase because of global liquidity. And, and we are a preferred destination as we think we are? Yes, I think so. But obviously, if this builds up and if foreign investors see more bad news, mm. um, whether it's alleged corruption, whether it's reopening things like the payments that they're mm -hmm. going to face on the 2G, maybe on the 2G licenses, mm. um, or whether it's a project being looked at in the environmental area, um, it, that could affect it. But long term. look at the people who are trying to rush in. 300 companies came with came with President Obama when he came, in the middle of all the fuss over Vodafone. Just when Vodafone yeah. was saying that what's happening to us on tax is really going yeah. to infest foreign so investment. On the, ground, on the ground you're seeing it, yeah. And then mm. 300 companies come in with, uh, come in with the American president. Vodafone's yeah. argument, I'm sorry, doesn't sound very valid. I think coming from you is a great confirmation for, for our viewers. Uh, don't go away. We'll just have a short break. And uh, after this section, we will be having specific sectors and your take being an old India hand on any of these sectors and whether you see something more needs to be done. And always, as always, you remember on what you've said now and what we'll be talking about. If you want to participate, email your questions to under the lens at utvmoney.com. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you.